Vakratunda Mahakaya, Surya Koti Sama Prabha, Nirvignam Kurume Deva, Sarva Kadyeshu Sarvada, Saraswati Namastubhyam, Varade Kama Rupini, Vidyaram Bham Karishami, Siddhir Bhavatume Sada, Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwaraha, Guru Deva Param Brahma, Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha. If you are going to go for a walk around your neighborhood, you don't need any advice to do that. You just put your shoes on and go. If you're going to sign up for a 10 kilometer run, you may need to ask someone about how much water to drink, what kind of shoes to wear. If you're going to try an ultra marathon that is 100 kilometers without a trainer, that is not going to be possible. Let's use a different example. If you're going to drive to the local metropolitan city, the one that's closest to you, you just follow, follow the green signs and get there. If you're going to drive across the country from one coast to the other coast, you need to plan your route. Ask Google Maps, ask a travel agent. If you're going to go on a year-long excursion of going to multiple countries without the advice of someone who knows the legal aspects, the health aspects, that is not going to be possible. As our responsibilities grow in life, because we are growing, we need more guidance. When there's little responsibilities, we are lower in life. And I'm not talking about popularity. I'm not talking about power. In general, then one can keep on living. But as one grows, responsibilities grow. Without having guidance from above, guidance from those with experience, we tend to disintegrate and fall. And we're reading and seeing more and more of this happening amongst politicians, celebrities, athletes. They're growing in life. There's more responsibilities. But maybe they don't have that guidance from above, that experience to handle the pressure, to handle what is given to them. This is the reason why we established Vichara Gurukula. Kula means family. I hope you're looking at me right now, but if you pause and look around at everyone else, this is our family. You have entire communities that have gathered in some places. You have families that have gathered in other places, people in different time zones. This Kula is focusing on Guru. Guru means guide. Guru means guidance. We are guiding each other. We're wanting to be guided together. In what? Vichara. Vichara means to think. Vichara means to prioritize. Vichara means to know what is important. So family that is guiding each other in that which is important. And what is the most important? Happiness. Happiness for no reason. In other words, our nature, independent joy. 
vijarena nivartate. It is through thinking that one becomes free. And by not thinking, one is bound. Every one of us, and I know most of the people well who are gathered for our, our jnana yajna, for our virtual workshop, we often use Vedantic swear words. And there used to be one Vedantic swear word. It starts with B in English, three letters. But now, unfortunately, a new one has come also. The first word is but, B-U-T. I wanted to think, but I didn't. I didn't want to overeat, but. I wanted to let that person go while I was driving, but I own the road. And the new Vedantic swear word, starting with B in English with four letters is busy. I'm too busy. There's no time. If there's no time, there's no thinking. Those two go together. Just like the more you manage your minutes, the more you manage your mind. They go together. So Vijara Gurukula also has the vision that people keep swearing against themselves, but I don't know where to drive <laughs> to learn about Hanuman Chalisa. I'm busy. Who has the time to um, dress up and make notes? If people don't come to the ashram, we bring the ashram to the people. If people don't go to religion, we bring religion to the people. If you don't go to the game, the game will be brought to you. Our jnana yajna, our virtual workshop, is called Human to Hanuman. When you go to a traditional mandir, a temple, and you want to offer ritualistic worship to the deity, to the altar, there tends to be a pujari, a priest there, and he asks you what your name is. I hope you all know what our names are. And then he asks you what your gotra is. That is, this is your name, but what is your lineage? And that causes people a lot of panic. Our heart beats a little bit faster. We kind of look around for some sort of guidance. And then you think of a, a great Sanskrit name that starts with K and add Rishi there. So Kapala Rishi or Kashyapa Rishi or something like that. <laughs> But there's great depth to this because my name may be Vivek, but my lineage is that of a Rishi and yours also. A Rishi is a seer, someone who can see where happiness is within oneself. So I am not just Vivek. I am also the son, daughter of greatness. And the greatness, our rishis, are sons and daughters of God, of Bhagavan. So when we title this workshop as Human to Hanuman, this is not just alliteration, H and H. This is not just catchy. This is the truth. And to know the truth, one has to have an open mind. With a closed mind, the truth is only what we experience, what I see with my eyes. If I can go deeper into this, the mind is a I can't equipment. The intellect is a I can equipment. And if you study Srimad Bhagavad Gita, this great text begins with I can speaking louder than I can. But slowly, I can, that is the intellect, that is Bhagavan Krishna, begins to speak to Prince Arjuna, the mind, I can. Now, and throughout this workshop, I want you to keep a pulse on who's louder, I can't or I can. Let's think about Hanumanji's son. Hanumanji 
when we are introduced to him in Ramayana, is living well. He's living with Sugriva, his friends, wise people. He's not afraid of being hurt by Vali and others. So he's living well. When Hanumanji meets Bhagavan Rama, that is a experience of introspection. Upon introspecting, he goes deeper into himself. He starts to let go of his masks, lets go of complacency. And through that introspection, he goes from living well to divine living. We rarely know about Hanumanji prior to Bhagavan Rama. But with Bhagavan Rama, you can never separate Hanumanji. And really, this is all of us too. All of us are living well. Our physiological needs, our safety needs, our belonging needs, that's all well. But divine living is when we go deeper to esteem, to actualization. And that will happen with introspection. Anumanji is an icon of introspection, going from the ordinary to the extraordinary. The text on Hanumanji has been written by Goswamiji. Goswamiji. When we travel with our son Vyasa, when people ask, their first question is, is it a boy or a girl? <laughs> is it a boy or a girl? And some people don't even ask that. They just say, she's beautiful. And we say, yes, she is. <laughs> and then they ask, what is your son's name? And we say, Vyasa. What does Vyasa mean? And I share visionary. But Vyasa actually doesn't mean that. Vyasa means editor. So imagine I tell someone, my son's name is editor. <laughs> You're a negligent parent. <laughs> But he edited because he was a visionary. He knew that people weren't coming to the Veda, so he brought the Veda to the people. Vyasa, Veda Vyasa was like that. Valmiki ji in the same way, no? The people actually weren't even going to the volumes of the Veda, so he took the Veda and demonstrated this through Dharma, Valmiki ji's Ramayana. And Goswamiji is the same caliber of being a visionary that people weren't going to Ramayana focusing on Dharma in Sanskrit. So he wrote Ramayana focusing on devotion in a simple language, the people's language. And a more simplified version of this is Hanuman Chalisa. You're studying from a visionary he has made the ayana to Rama, the path to Rama, the path to peace, accessible. If a path is inaccessible, it's actually more frustrating. Because you know you can go there, but you can't go there. He has made this accessible for all of us. With this commencement, let us chant together the first doha, of Hanuman Chalisa. This Doha is an opening prayer. It actually teaches us what Hanuman Chalisa is about. You can treat this as a table of contents almost. Together, Shri Guru Charana Saroja Raja Nija Manu Mukuru Sudhari Baranao Raguvara Vimala Jasu Jodaya Kupala Chari I will share a review of this Doha in the next one because we've studied this in detail in part one of Human to Hanuman. And some may be thinking, but we weren't part of that. The beauty of technology is we can record this and share this. You do have access to this. As you think, so you develop. Everyone agrees. As you think, so you develop. If you think you can't, you can't. And I heard a really simple quote to encapsulate this. 
If you think you can, or you think you can't, you're probably right. If you think you can be enlightened, you're probably right. If you think you can't be enlightened, you're probably right. And what this Doha focuses on is to change how we're thinking. Let us think about the Guru. Let us bring the Guru to our mind. Let us describe Hanumanji. Hanumanji is the best. That's why he's known as Ragu Vara. Vara means the best of the best. And when someone is the best, they can give the best. True? You can only share what you have. As you think, so you develop. And Hanumanji is the best. That's what we're thinking about. And so he can give us the best. We should also think about that. Jodayaku Palachari. He can give us whatever we want. So what do you want? The summary word for this first Doha is purify. For every Doha, every Chaupai, we have come up with a English verb. Why? Because this is not English. Why are you giving English verbs? There's three words that are very important for one to go from human to Hanuman. Simple, rememberable, practicable. I'm not clear if all of those are English words, but it doesn't matter. Simple, rememberable, practical. That which is simple you can remember. True? Driving on a highway is simple. It's easy to remember. Driving in inner streets is not. Is this one way? Um, is there a pedestrian crossing here? Rememberable. When one is remembered whatever, it's closer to them. People who are not important in my life, I don't remember. People who are important, I remember. Their birthdays, the names of their kids. And in this context, if you can remember, you can practice. If you can't remember, you can't practice. There's a Sanskrit subhashitam, words of wisdom that say, knowledge in, the, in a book is like money in a bank and you've forgotten the code. You really need that money. It's in the safe, but you don't know the code. It's like us using social media, but we forget our passwords, right? We have these elaborate accounts, but how do I get in? Simple, rememberable, practical. So that's why these English verbs are simple. Hoping we'll remember them. And most importantly is to practice these, these teachings. The next Doha. Buddhihina tanujani ke sumira upavana kumara bala buddhi vidya dehu mohi harahu kale savikara what do you want? The evolution of our personality is when we seek independence. As long as we're seeking that which is small, dependent, like pleasure, possession, position, we've not evolved sufficiently. But one who's most evolved, what they want, what they're seeking, is peace. Not just strength and intelligence. They're remembering Hanumanji. He had strength and intelligence, but the greatness of Hanumanji is he had Bhagavan Rama, who is peace. Please give me what you have. And when I become independent, that means I do not depend on articles, being circumstances. I do not depend on pleasure, possession, position that come and go. Therefore, I am never stuck. This kalesha in Sanskrit is klesha. Like sangata. That I'm stuck. Why am I stuck? Because I depend. But now I am thinking more. I'm waking up. I want to be that which is independent. When I'm independent, no one can stop me. Nothing can stop me. The summary word for the second Doha is no. 
know your potential. If you don't know your potential, you can't live up to it, correct? Know your potential. The first 20 chaupais, I will review throughout the study of the next 20 chaupais, that is 21 through 40. I will not go through an individual review. I will keep connecting them. And as I mentioned, if you go to the Vichara Gurukula YouTube channel, last year's Human to Hanuman has been shared with everyone. As I continue our study of Human to Hanuman, of Hanuman Chalisa, beginning with Chopai 21, we're going to look at each Chopai from three perspectives. Perspective number one is the Pauranic meaning. What do these scriptures have to share? How is this Chopai related to the scriptures? Pauranic. The second perspective would be Adhyatmic. What is the implied meaning, the subjective meaning? How will this work for you? And finally, the third perspective is our sadhana. That's why we chose verbs, English verbs. This is what we are to do. If you remember the verb, you will remember the subjective meaning of this, chaupai. My last introduction thought, because we're, we're continuing with our introduction, our review. Please do not be one who is satisfied with chanting Hanuman Chalisa. That's living well. But for divine living, this is not to be chanted, this is to be studied. What we're doing is not pata as in just chanting, this is pata as in we're internalizing this through study. Okay? We'll go chopai by chopai. As I chant, you also chant. Rama duare tu marakavare, hotana agnya binupe sare. The Puranic meaning of Chopai 21. Rama duare, Rama dwara, tu marakavara. You are the keeper of Bhagavan Rama's gate, his kingdom. Another word for this would be dwara pala. You've heard that before, like Jaya and Vijaya are the Dwarapalas for Bhagavan Vishnu. Hotana Agnya Binu Paisare, without his Agnya, without Hanumanji's permission, you cannot come into Bhagavan Rama's kingdom. And what's fascinating about this is you can't leave <laughs> Bhagavan Rama's kingdom either. So let's look at this from a Puranic sense. Hanumanji is the guard of Bhagavan Rama's kingdom. If you want to access Bhagavan Rama, whenever you see him, Hanumanji is there too. He's a guard, but he's a very unique guard. He's a guard and greeter too. Whenever you think of a security guard, they're always keeping people away from whom they're securing. But Hanumanji is not like that. He is a guard, but he's also a greeter. He's saying, come, <laughs> come to me, come closer to who's here, Bhagavan Rama. So when we study this Chopai from a Puranic sense, let us not associate this with a worldly guard. He's a greeter and guard. He's a guard and greeter. You cannot separate Hanumanji from Bhagavan Rama. We'll study more about that. Here is the adhyatmic meaning of this chopai. Hanumanji is encouraging us to deserve joy. To deserve joy. Now we all may be thinking, don't we all deserve joy? We do in principle, but in a practical sense, it's like saying, we all know we should exercise, but who actually exercised? We all deserve joy. But who actually wants peace when we're still distracted with position, possession, pleasure? To deserve joy. And this is not different than what we study about having a relationship with a sadguru, the shishya and the sadguru. 
uh, Sadhguru comes into one's life when one becomes a Shishya. And a great example of that is Bhagavan Krishna and Prince Arjuna. Until Prince Arjuna says, Shishyaha te aham. I am your disciple. Until then, Bhagavan Krishna was his <coughs> cousin, friend. No? Only then, Bhagavan Krishna smiles and says, Na anusho chandi panditaha, the wise. You're going to become wise, Prince Arjuna. Do not grieve. Their nature is joy. Deserve joy is what's being shared in this chopai. Hanumanji is greeting us, saying, this is where joy is, this is where joy is. And you can't leave once you've entered this kingdom without Hanumanji's permission. What this feels like, for all of you who are, are engaged in seva, who have volunteered, once you've lived a life of service, can you leave that life and go to indulgence or selfishness? Never. Once you've trained yourself to wake up early on Sunday mornings to prepare to teach adults, kids, and so on, can you go back to sleeping in and watching football? No, while you're sleeping and watching football, you keep thinking about, I could be studying this, I could be teaching this, I could be eating this, <laughs> based on what's being served on that Sunday morning. Once you've tasted joy, independent joy, you cannot go back to dependent joy. And so actually, Hanumanji is not even a guard, he's just a greeter. Once you've come in, you yourself will not want to leave. And if you doubt this, if you doubt what's being shared, there's a special form of prostration called pranipata. Have you heard of this word before, pranipata? Okay. Pranipata is when you put one hand on the feet of one's guru, one's god, okay, on top. And you put one hand underneath their feet. One hand on top, one hand underneath. You know, like kids... <laughs> they, they clap their hands like that. <laughs> so the one hand on top is, I want to access this joy. The hand underneath is, that if I try to leave, don't let me leave. <laughs> so that's being a greeter and a guard. The summary word, the sadhana for Chopai 21 is earn. E-A-R-N. Earn. A sadguru. Earn your place in Bhagavan Rama's kingdom. And the way to earn this is be steady. Be sincere. Steadiness is like giving your time. And the more you give your time, that steadiness, this evolves to being sincere, which is giving your effort. Most practical ways to do this. And I love joking about this word steady. In high school, people don't date. They go steady with each other, correct? That they give each other their time. And a really steady relationship will evolve to being sincere that they may be a couple post high school also. But you see many high school relationships falter because that steadiness gets broken, that time is no longer there, and they haven't reached sincerity. So that relationship ends. So for all, all of our high school students, dating advice, Hanuman Chalisa. All is contained within Hanuman Chalisa. Chopai 22. Together. Saba sukha lahe tomari sarana, tomara chaka kahu ko darana. This is a popular Chopai. Saba sukha lahi tomari sarana. By surrendering to you, by being close to you, sabasukha, all of the joys. And this is an interesting teaching here, all of the joys. There's actually only one joy, but we go in thinking there's many joys. Tumarakshaka 
You are the protector. Ka hoko darana. If you're the protector, why should I be scared? So opening this up some. The Puranic meaning. There is an episode in Ramayana where Bhagavan Rama is watching as his bridge is being built from Rameshram to Lanka. And all of the monkeys, they're taking stones and boulders and they're writing with chalk or they're just scratching into those rocks, Ram, and saying Jai Shri Ram, and they're throwing that into the water. And these stones are magically, gracefully aligning with each other to build a solid structure. Other animals are throwing trees, other smaller animals are putting grains of sand. And Bhagavan Rama is watching all of this in amazement that they're putting my name on this and all of this is floating. How is this happening? So he quietly, in a stealth-like way, goes over to that bridge where nobody else is watching him. And he takes a small rock. He doesn't want to cause too much of a scene. And he throws it into the water. And that rock goes straight to the bottom. And he's saddened by this, that everyone else is, <laughs> their materials are floating and mine's sinking. And then he looks around again and there's Hanumanji. <laughs> Imagine, you have to see with his arms crossed, smiling. <laughs> You're wondering why your rock has gone to the ground. So Bhagavan Rama comes to him and says, yeah, how come their rocks are floating and my rock is falling? And Hanumanji said, anyone, anything you let go of will always fall. Anyone, anything you let go of, how can that flow? This is the Puranic or the scriptural reference to this Chopai. Hanumanji is always watching Bhagavan Rama. Bhagavan Rama may not see him, but Hanumanji sees him. And since he's always watching him, he's always with him too, isn't it? It's like parents of infants. They're always watching their infants, whether physically or with cool monitors, or at least they're worrying about them. <laughs> and that's why parents with infants, you shouldn't eat out at restaurants without your infants. Because though your body's in that restaurant, where are you really? You're with that infant, isn't it? You're talking about your kids, they're doing this, not doing this. Just be with them then. Watching is with. Now bringing this to an adhyatmic level. The word sharana sounds like another word. Place the S with C and you get charana. Charana means feet. And charana in English can be known as association. If I surrender to Hanumanji, which is really me being at Hanumanji's feet, and where is Hanumanji? At Bhagavan Rama's feet. So if I'm at Hanumanji's feet, that by association means I'm at Bhagavan Rama's feet. And if I'm at Bhagavan Rama's feet, that is Sukha. Now, Sukha can be interpreted in two ways. Kham, K-H-A-M, means space. Su means good. Su means great, greatest. So the Sukha that Bhagavan Rama can give, that's the inner Sukha. That's the good space in one's Mind or good space, as in one's soul. In simple words, peace. And when one is peaceful, what naturally comes with that is prosperity. That's the other sukhas. If you have moksha, what's included in that is dharma, artha, and kama. But if you have artha, dharma, kama, moksha, there may be included, moksha definitely not, but the others may be included, may not be included. So if you think about an investment, what's the greatest investment? Invest in the highest. All is included in that, no? And this relates to the next line, Tumarak chaka ka ho ko darana. What are you scared of? What causes you fear? Bhagavan Krishna shares in Bhagavad Gita, 
Bhaya is an effect. Fear is an effect. The cause of Bhaya is Raga or attachment. Attachment is also an effect. The cause for Raga is Vikshepa or projection. Another word for projection in a relationship sense is expectation. Where there's expectations, there will be attachment. It's so funny as I say that all of the other, you know, great thoughts I'm sharing about Ramayana and enlightenment, as soon as they say, where there's expectation, there's, per there's attachment, everyone's like, yes, we know. This is our story. <laughs> and now, projection is actually an effect also. The cause of vikshepa is avidya, or incompleteness. So if you go back to the first line, if you're complete, that means you do not project, which means you're not attached, which means you're not afraid. With nothing to gain, there is nothing to lose. How amazing is this, this chopai? We interpret it as tumarak chakaka hoko darana. It's very physical for us, right? I'm walking in the dark or I'm in an alley. Hanumanji is going to protect me. But that's context based. Make this content based. And our summary word, our sadhana for the 22nd chopai is develop. Develop means develop what you want in life. If what I want in life is peace, then I start to develop towards that. But if my purpose is very low, I just want to be rich. The best in me is not brought out. If I want to develop peace, the best in me is brought out. 23. Each class, we're going to take up... Mm, six parts of Hanuman Chalisa. So today we covered the Dohas and we're going to study, so we covered the introduction to Hanumanji, introduction to Goswamiji, the review of the Dohas, and we're going to study four Chopas. Tomorrow we'll study six Chopas. Got it? So six units. 23. samaro ape Tino loka hakate kampe. Apana teja samaro ape. Your teja, your power, samaro ape, is only controlled by you. Apana ape. You, yours is controlled by you. Tino loka, all of the worlds, the most literal sense of Loka is worlds. Hankate kampe. When you roar, they are shaken. The literal meaning. We go to the Puranic meaning of this chopa. When Hanumanji left Rameshram, he jumped onto a hillock called Mahendra. And when he jumped onto Mahendra, this hillock, this went straight down to Patala. It went from the earth down seven worlds. That's why this word loka is used. And he is roaring. And he has good genes with roaring. One of Hanumanji's father's names is Kesari. Don't say Bhagavan Shiva roars. Kesari. Kesari means a lion-like monkey. Lions are experts in, in roaring. And then he takes off to Rameshram, I'm sorry, from Rameshram, and arrives in Lanka. And when he arrives in Lanka, there's a lot of beautiful happenings. I'll share those. But what I want to focus on here is he's there to find Ravana. Because if he finds Ravana, naturally he'll find Mother Sita. And as he's wandering through Lanka, he comes to realize that Lanka is a pleasure palace. Pleasure palace is a term that's been coined for where Prince Siddhartha grew up. 
Prince Siddhartha's father created this pleasure palace where there is no aging, no decaying, that's disease, and no dying. No aging, no decaying, no dying. And Prince Siddhartha was a thinker. And he escaped this pleasure palace. He saw an old man, a dying man, a dead man. And see, he didn't stop there and, oh, I give up then. He went out again and saw a happy man, a divine man. You can play with those words. And he became a divine man. Ravana also has created a pleasure palace. There's bottles of liquor everywhere. There's food that's not been finished everywhere. There's naked beings everywhere. In Goswamiji's Ramayana, he doesn't describe this in so much detail because Goswamiji is like a positive person. He doesn't like harsh words. He likes to focus on the positivity, which I like also. He says that when Hanumanji saw Ravana, he was sleeping. Shayana. So this pleasure palace. Hanumanji is physically a monkey. Monkeys love to explore, right? Touch this, open this, put this in their mouth. That's what we call our son monkey. He loves looking around. He loves putting whatever he sees in his mouth. <laughs> so now this is a pleasure palace. There is maximum articles and beings and circumstances. But at no point is Hanumanji distracted by this pleasure palace. He is in control here. Yeah, through the pleasure palace, through this control, he meets another controlled being, that is Vibhishana, and it is through Vibhishana that he finally reaches Mother Sita. So this is a Puranic narration that brings this Chopai to life. Now we focus on the Adhyatmic meaning to this. There's a great text that all of us should study called Jivan Sutrani. That is, Tips for Happy Living, written by Swami Tejumayana. And one of these sutras is, only you can live your life. Only you can live your life. Deep, no? We all know that, but we need it in a sutra. Yeah, deep. Only you can breathe oxygen into your lungs. Whoa. <laughs> we get it physically, but mentally it's even more true. If you go to work tomorrow, if you go to school, you go to the grocery store, and you see someone sad, there is no reaction in the mind. When we see someone happy, hey, how come they're happy? Like it's some strange phenomena to us. When I am happy, that doesn't mean you will be happy. When I'm sad, it doesn't mean you will be sad. Your happiness is your happiness. Your sadness is your sadness. In a more extreme sense, your enlightenment is your enlightenment. A guru's enlightenment is a guru's enlightenment. Only you can live your life. No one can control you other than you. No one can give you purpose other than you. Many people are not inclined towards Sanatana Dharma, specifically to Advaita Vedanta, because our scriptures like Bhagavad Gita don't say do's and don'ts. They share, be dharmic, be responsible. What we want is tell me what to do. But if someone tells you what to do, it will come in fast and it will Go fast also. I'll give you another context to this. What's some popular questions that arise in such forums? Think. One for sure is, is there fate or is there free will? And they say it with such seriousness too. And they've asked this question a hundred times. Some people openly say, I asked that Acharya, I asked that Acharya, I asked that Acharya, but they didn't know. 
So that's, that's why I'm asking you. <laughs> and I'm sure every guide, every knowledgeable person gave them the right answer, but are they ready for the answer? It's like you have these great seeds and you throw them onto hardened soil. They just blow away, correct? But if that soil is tilled and moistened, when that seed comes in, if one seed comes in, that grows, my point here is, grows from within. Only you can control yourself, give yourself purpose, be enlightened. And the way to do that is through discipline. Tino loka hakate kampe. I said the literal meaning of loka is worlds, heaven, earth, hell. But the deeper interpretation of loka is not worlds, but tenses. Past tense, present tense, and future tense. And it's not that the world is trembling. The world is, or the periods of time, they are remembering. They're remembering. Those who are disciplined are remembered forever. Correct? And interestingly, those who are extremely indisciplined are also remembered forever. Like if you go to a party and someone is drinking too much. At the party, leaving the party, you always think about that person, correct? We cannot invite that person to the party again. And even better than that, is suppose you're all socializing at a party again and everyone else is indulging and a person is confidently, cheerfully not. At that party, post that party, you think, wow, that person is strong. And so for the next party, you don't invite them because they make you feel bad. <laughs> or you think you'll save money if you, <laughs> if you invite them because they're not going to eat or drink a lot. Or, if you want to change the culture of that party, you invite such a person. It is the discipline that are remembered forever. When I share with people how many hours Puja Guru Dev sleeps, that's what people remember. They may not remember he wrote a commentary on Bhagavad Gita or set up this organization. But when I say he used to sleep at 12 a.m., a.m., not like us, 12 p.m., <laughs> And he would wake up at 3 a.m. His light would be on at 3 a.m. And so many of our senior Acharyas who have met Puja Gurudev, I've never met him with my eyes, they would say at 4 a.m. he would come out of his room dancing, you know, spinning around, moving his arms. And they're on the verge of collapse because they've slept the same amount of hours. And here, he is the most dynamic person. I actually think Puja Gurudev just didn't sleep. Like, Prince Arjuna's name is Gurakesha, the one who's conquered sleep, conquered tamas. Puja Gurudev also. You see that discipline is what people remember, isn't it? And so the sadhana for Chopai 23 is focus. When we focus on the present, it helps us create a greater future we will be remembered by that. When I focus on the karma, the pala becomes more beautiful. When I'm focused, I'm not distracted. I just shared with a group of younger people with a <coughs> really interesting dialogue going on. There's a group of kids sitting in the front and their parents were sitting in the back. And I asked all of the kids two questions, okay? The first question was, kids, do your parents teach you to be good or smart. And most of the kids had their hand up for, our parents teach us to be smart. And then their parents were in the back. The kids could not see their parents. I asked the parents, parents, do you teach your kids to be good or smart? And they all had their hands up for good. <laughs> see, the parents think they're teaching their kids to be good, but they're actually teaching them to be smart. And then I asked them another question. I asked the kids, how many of you think you're distracted? And a few people had their hands up. Then ask the parents, parents, how many of you think your kids are distracted? All of them had their hands up. <laughs> and I followed up saying, I don't think any of you are distracted because, and this is a simple, powerful quote, a distraction is a distraction 
if you are distracted. A distraction is a distraction if you are distracted. And if you are not distracted, that's not a distraction, correct? Focus, and you will never be distracted. Like Hanumanji. And we shift to our last Chopai for this class. This is also a popular uh, Chopai, perhaps one of the most popular Chopais of, of Hanuman Chalisa. Bhuta pisacha nikata nahi ave mahavira jabanama sunave. Bhuta. Bhuta here is ghosts. Pisacha is like goblins. Nikata nahi ave. And they do not come close. Mahavira. Jabanama sunave. When they hear the name Mahavira. This is the literal meaning. We go to the Pauranic meaning. When Hanumanji left Rameshram, one of the beings he came across was Surasa. Surasa is the mother of serpents. So you have to imagine how she would look. She would be the mother of all serpents. So heads and tongues and fangs. And what is shared is she expanded her body to Shatta Yojana. A hundred times eight miles, that's 800 miles, like 13, 1400 kilometers. We're scared of 14 centimeter snakes and imagine seeing a 1400 kilometer snake. That too coming out of the water. Then Hanumanji conquered Surasa. Next came Simhika and she was a uh, a being that could catch people's shadows and pull them down. So as the birds would fly over the Indian Ocean, she would catch the shadows of those birds and she would pull them down and consume them. Now Hanumanji is flying. His body is the size of eight miles. Imagine what a meal that would be for Simika. She's eating seagulls, maybe a vulture. Now she gets Eight miles of food is like the cornucopia of food. And Hanumanji conquers her and continues. And then arrives in Lanka. And there the prime guard of Lanka is Lankini. And she calls Hanumanji a thief working for a thief. And Hanumanji gives her one blow. Lankini comes to her senses and realizes that she's a thief working for a thief. Bhuta Pisacha, ghosts and goblins. All of these beings, Surasa is looking like this massive serpent. And then you have Simhika, who's a shady character pulling on shadows. And then Lankini, who's a, a, a Rakshasa. And if you want to look at this differently, where did Surasa come from? Surasa came from uh, the water, correct? And where did Simhika come from? Simhika essentially is working on the air. And where is Lankini? She's on the ground. So there's lots and lots of interpretations of this journey of a seeker. I'm shifting to the adhyatmic sense. A seeker from wanting peace to being with peace. Hanumanji is a shisha, a seeker. Mother Sita is the sadhya. She is shanti or peace. And there will be lots of challenges on the way. Some challenges will come from the water, some from the sky, some from land. But deeper than this, each of these bhutas, pisachas, these beings symbolize a vice. They symbolize inner demons. Surasa is the symbol for greed. A greedy person, they keep wanting more and more and more. And how beautifully the cure to greed is santosha. Santosha is being small. And that's not being small, it means being easily pleased. 
Santosha is like Ashutosh, easily pleased. Then Simhika is a symbol for jealousy. A jealous person, as soon as anyone is above them, they start to pull them down, correct? And that's what Simhika did. Hanumanji with Surasa used to talk to her. They had a dialogue and they came to an agreement. He cooperated with her and left. With Simika, he destroyed her immediately. Because jealousy is like that. We try to rationalize jealousy. Can you rationalize jealousy? Jealousy is the most irrational vice. That's why it's the sixth of the inner enemies. If you think of the six inner enemies we all have, Kama, which is desire. Kroda, anger. Lobha, greed. Moha, confusion. Mada, arrogance. And Matsarya, jealousy. The most irrational, the farthest from being productive is jealousy. And finally, we go to Lankini. She's also a icon in the negative. She's a symbol for Moha. She's confused. She thinks Hanumanji is a thief working for a thief, correct? A confused person doesn't see who they are or who they're working for. And Hanumanji hitting her. And people take that too literally. Though he does hit her literally, she's grateful for that. It's like I was recently with a, a young adult who was staying at the home we were staying at. And we had to leave. And she also had to leave, but I knew she was still sleeping. So I was knocking on her door and I was saying, so-and-so, I know you're awake right now and I know you're going to be on time for us to have to leave because if you're not on time, then I'm not going to be on time either. And she's like, yeah, yeah, even though she was clearly sleeping. <laughs> See, I was like the person who was unconfusing her in that particular circumstance. And I've heard one Acharya saying that Hanumanji gave her satsang. <laughs> that... Wrong notion is, is corrected. He changes that confusion to clarity. Bhuta pisacha nikata nahi ave. Where the name Hanumanji is, is heard. And if the name is there, the form can't be far, correct? And that's why with this chopai, we always chant the second line louder. Bhuta pisacha nikata nahi ave. Maha Veera Jabba Nama Tsunami. And I would like to take a little bit more time with this Chopai because it's so popular and powerful. I want to tell you about another demon. The type of demon is called Nisachara. You've all heard of Nisacharas. Shall I show you a Nisachara? As you're looking at me, just look at everyone else. <laughs> including yourself. Nisachara is Nishayam Charati Iti Nisachara. The one who wanders around at night <laughs> is, a, is a demon. <laughs> Nishayam means night, Charati. They're wandering around at night. Because what is nighttime? It is Tamas. There is darkness inside, so there's darkness out, darkness outside, darkness inside. I was teaching in one place and there was a gentleman who never comes to these discourses. And I got to ask him, so what did you learn through these discourses? And he looked at me in a very straightforward way. I learned that my kids are Rakshasas. <laughs> Nothing about himself, but he was saying, my kids wander around at night all the time. So that means they are Rakshasas. <laughs> so now again, think. Bhuta pisacha nikata nahiyave. These demons are not outside. These demons are inside. And if you want these demons to go away, you have to remember Hanumanji. You have to be like Hanumanji. This word Mahavira is famous in what religion? Jainism, no? The word Jain, Jain, Jain actually comes from Jaina which is someone who follows Jinna. So Jain comes from Jaina, which comes from Jinna. Jinna means conquer. 
conquer. Someone who's following Jinnah is one who's trying to conquer themselves. In Vedanta, this is the word Vijaya. Jaya means outer victory. Vijaya means inner victory. Jinnah is not a king. Jinnah is to be the ruler of oneself. And how do you follow Jinnah? In Vedanta, we call this Yama. Yama is discipline. This discipline is in the form of five don'ts. Here are the don'ts. Don't harm. That is called ahimsa. I'm going alphabetically. Next is don't collect. That is aparigraha. Aparigraha. Number three is don't steal. In Sanskrit, asteya. Number four is don't indulge. Brahmacharya. And the last is don't lie. That is satya. I'll go through those again. In English, don't harm, don't collect, don't steal, don't indulge, don't lie. In Sanskrit, ahimsa, aparigraha, asteya, brahmacharya, satya. This is called yama. Yama is discipline. When I'm practicing these, that means I'm following Jinna, which means I'm a Jaina. That is Mahavira. Too deep. And so the sadhana, the summary word here is protect. Protect. Protect yourself from these demons. Because these demons are not outside, these demons are within. Wonderful! I can't even say good, because we always say that. How are you? Good. How's the food? Good. Are you doing good? This is not good. This is wonderful. This is Ascharya, or Hanuman Chalisa. When we study it, I feel when we chant it, it's good. When we study this, this is wonderful. And I feel the way that we are studying this is even more wonderful. Oh. Narayan.